Resilience for Ports was set up in September 2020 to support port systems and global supply chains to withstand multiple drivers of disruption. A collaboration of public and private stakeholders have come together to define social, environmental and economic outcomes of ports in the face of decarbonisation, automation, technology, climate change and global trade patterns to help build critical infrastructure systems that can withstand challenging times and transform ports into carbon-neutral smart hubs that are resilient to future uncertainties. With over 20 years' experience working on infrastructure projects, Juliet Mian has an in-depth understanding of infrastructure resilience. If you ask people for a definition of resilience, 20 people will give you 20 subtly different definitions. Resilience is the ability to withstand, or if not withstand, adapt to and recover positively from unexpected events. Recently we've had the, the Suez Canal crisis, again we've, we've had Brexit. You know, there, there are many things that have shown there is some fragility in ports and it doesn't take long to see the the impacts on society, um, empty supermarket shelves or you know, missing goods and products. Alastair Gale believes resilience is part of a long-term strategy for the Port of London Authority. As the UK's major port, we have a particularly important role to play in making sure that the supply chains that we are part of don't break at any point. It's absolutely crucial and resilience is a fundamental part of that. So whether that's food to be on the supermarket shelves, that's fuel in the forecourts or it's medicines in the pharmacy, that's a fundamental role for ports and consequently resilience. In the public eye, ports have recently been under strain as a result of Brexit trade negotiations and shortages of everyday supplies to consumers during the global pandemic. We've seen the supply chain massively challenged over the last 18 months or so, you know, starting off with, with COVID-19, which presented a whole array of challenges. What organisations need to start to do is not go, um, well, it's, it's happened, we've just got to wait. They need to start looking at what the other options are. Resilience, that's taking measures to cope with changes or challenges that are only going to get worse in the future, is something that's best done as early on in the process of planning and development as possible to avoid making expensive mistakes which only need to be changed later on. For ports to be able to adapt and become more resilient requires investment. Since 2006, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development has funded adaptation projects in 27 countries to build resilience to the impacts of climate change. It's much more cost effective to design your infrastructure to cope with future climate and to, to operate it in a way that is sort of responding to or prepared for those sort of impacts that you're expecting to get rather than um, paying to rebuild it afterwards. Was that, was that was with ACOM, was that? Yeah, yeah. So there can be changes to actually the physical design of the infrastructure, say like the drainage design or the key wall height or improvements to breakwaters. We work with them to understand what the impacts to their business are from physical climate risk sea level rise or increases in storm surges and the energy of waves that hitting, hitting the ports. It can also be things like increased rainfall, precipitation, increased temperatures. We can then help them to, to respond to the risks. Ports are catalysts for the decarbonisation agenda. As many fuels are piped or shipped through ports for storage and distribution, the energy sector is critically linked to the transformation of port systems. Port operators need to meet the dual challenge of playing their role in the UK's drive to be carbon net zero by 2050, whilst ensuring their operations are resilient in the face of a changing climate. Ports are really a, a nexus that fully integrates with the energy system, so there's almost no division between what ports do and what energy does. Ports within themselves, of course, use energy and need to be able to respond to what the energy system is doing, both economically and in terms of its carbon trajectory. The resilience shift is focused on helping ports to consider resilience options as positive actions and not as hasty reactions. We tend to worry about the last bad thing that happened, so th there'll be a lot of measures in place for pandemics, but probably the next bad thing that happens won't be a pandemic. So, so we're trying to build the framework that says 
think about the bigger picture, think about everything that's changing and make your resilience enhancements in that context.